Hello. It's finally a delight to be here. I welcome you, our viewers, to our maiden edition of Family and Society Talk Show on Pure Heart Family Channel. Elizabeth Samsteady is my name, and I'm your host for today. You already know that on this channel, we talk family matters as they affect our society at large. Remember, I made you a promise that we will be having an interesting time together here. On our first topic today, we shall be discussing marriage. Family being the bedrock of the society, we cannot but overemphasize marriage, which is the root and the foundation of every home and family. We shall be looking at the importance of marriage, the circumstances that surround the institution. Questions like, is it compulsory for everyone to be married? And much more. Hi, what does marriage mean to you? How much value do you attach to the society? Young persons today have a careless and nonchalant attitude towards everything. Have you wondered why? Wonder no more. Join me, Elizabeth Samsedi, your host on Family and Society Talk Show on Pure Heart Family Channel as we address these pressing matters for a more reliable and dependable society that we all can be proud of. Stay tuned. My guest on the show today is Reverend Barrister Anuze Chinomso. He is a priest of the Anglican Diocese of Abuja and a principal partner of Lachido Associates. I hope I, hope I got that right. That's right. Uh, you are welcome um, to Family and Society. Thank you very much. We are so glad to have you Thank with you. us. Okay, um, today I'm going to start off um, with um, asking you my first question, which is still in one. Okay. The first question is, what is marriage? Secondly, what does marriage mean to you personally? Uh, marriage um, is a coming together of a man and a woman uh, who have decided to become husband and wife for life. In fact, I will look at it as a divine union made, promulgated, established, and ordained by God between a man and a woman that decided to become husband and wife for life. Simply put, that is what marriage is all about. And uh, marriage means everything to me. It means happiness. It means joy. When you look at people that know me before now, when I was single, we know that something has happened something has Indeed, changed something has changed so marriage is a very beautiful thing it's a very wonderful thing and not that they are not challenged they are not, but you know it's just a wonderful thing it means a lot to me and it's also divine just like i said it's not just something some effect some side of sort of physical thing no it's something that is divine it's pleasurable it's wonderful it's also sacred and holy okay. so it's wonderful okay uh, when you say divine, sacred, holy, yes. ordained by God, yes. Okay, does it mean that before one gets married, you you have to like hear from God, you have to get like a lead or a direction uh, from God uh, spiritually before you yeah. decide to go into marriage, or are you so is one supposed to like grow up and you know get to attain a certain age? when you are of marriage of age and you just go ahead good question you don't just see anybody and you just want to marry oftentimes that is what i've what i've led to breaking down of rules when you're talking about more of affection you don't want to ask questions you don't want to inquire even from people from elders from your parents you don't want to ask questions and you just move in you see that as you are just crashing in you will crash out but when you take your time the word marriage or the practice or institution of marriage is sacred uh, let me just move a little bit and go more into the spiritual aspect of it. If you look at the scripture in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, what I call key 2 to 4, it says, Because of this, a man should leave his father and mother and cling to the woman and they become one. Mm. That is to say, in marriage, one plus one is what one. And that is why they will become naked, they will not be ashamed of themselves. And when you look at that, you discover that it's an instruction of what God has given you. So marriage takes time in terms of praying to know the right partner. And of course, I know that when you are indeed yeah, you know, a child of God, there will be this you know, uh, sign you will have that this is the right person. I don't want to go much into that, but it's a yes. divine thing. God indeed ordained it. God sanctioned it, established it. Even the garden of Eden that exists between our first father and mother, which is Adam and Eve. 
I would like us to look at marriage from like different perspective, the legal perspective, perspective yes. um, the, the Christian. You are you are yes. a, a priest, yes. so, uh, so I would like us to look at um, the Christian perspective, perspective, then traditional. Okay, I've just said a little bit concerning that of the Christian. Yes, we are uh, as long as right. it's concerned, they talk about the monogamous family as one man and woman. Mm. And now, when you now look at the issue of uh, customary marriage. You now talk about where it is legitimate for a man to have as many wives as possible. Of course, in Sharia as well, if you go there legally, a man is entitled to four wives or even more than Yes, in Islam, yeah. Exactly. To fight right. dead, you will love them equally. Very important. Is that possible? Uh, well, no, they say this, but I'm not there. I'm not a Muslim. I'm not practicing. I have only one. But that is what they say that they have to do what? Love them equally. So I believe that it's working for them. And then none of them have complained. At least I have some Muslim friends that. They have many wives and all that. That is their own religion. Okay. Then traditionally, as a, as a traditional man, I'm, I'm from the uh, eastern part of your family, and a woman, mm -hmm. you see that the man is also entitled to many wives. That is a polygamous marriage or customary marriage by which you can now have to meet the person that you want to get married. The both parents, you know, now come to consent. There's this issue of a bride price. And if that bride price is the condition, sine qua non, that is, is a condition, is the main thing by which you must exchange it. And at the end of the day, marriage has been established. So even if when you bring all your 10 bags of rice and the many um, yams and what have you, without that bride price, that dowry, marriage has not completed, it's customary. Then you now talk about like what you call marriage under the parents. Just, just uh, to, to get it clear. Yes. In other words, being married traditionally, yes, it's it's, it's enough as it does. When you, have, you get married traditionally, customary. Yes. yes, 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 yes. You know, it's only when you want to um, do the solemnization. Maybe as a Christian, you okay. say you want to do wedding and all that, but traditional aspect of it, the legal law recognize that traditional aspect of it. And that is why there must be consent between both parents. Somebody wants to come and marry your daughter, mm -hmm. you must be aware of the man that's that is exactly. Oh, yeah. So that is a perfect marriage, customary, traditional. Okay. And let me also point out that the traditional form fair, uh, in Igbo, we call it a wangu or engagement, does not necessarily mean that it's the marriage itself. But in Igbo context, that dowry is the other things I just said about it. That is to say, when that dowry aspect of feed or that exercise is not taking place, mm -hmm. there is no traditional there is marriage. No marriage. There is no marriage. So we should be clear about that. Okay. Then you now talk about the issue of uh, marriage under the Act, mm -hmm. the legal one. Mm -hmm. Now, the marriage under the Act, there are what we, we, we look at it in two aspects. We have void marriage and voidable marriage, okay. and I will explain. Okay. Voidable marriage is a marriage that was existing, but one thing or the other led to it and no more existing and maybe the maybe there's a problem the separation but void marriage is money that is void at the issue that it was not existing for example when somebody is marrying the sister a man is marrying the daughter so no marriage is taking place so it's void at the issue so they, you can't place something on nothing and expect it to start it to definitely collapse then you have what you call when that of course another aspect of what can constitute void marriage is when the people are now into the degrees of consanguinity and of course affinity just like i said okay, can, the same blood. can we say a marriage is void if um it's based on um, lies no. No, no, that, no, 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 no. Marriage is void of an issue when there is degree of consanguinity and affinity. That is, a man marrying the daughter, a brother okay. marrying. Yes. Okay. But when, of course, of course, the issue of uh, deceit. There's maybe somebody showing me his picture. He's just so person abroad, only for the person to come and say I will marry. No, there's this lies and all that is void of an issue when the foundation is not being laid and all that. And of course, when it is not under the marriageable age. Mm -hmm. Is for that mm -hmm. issue. Imagine me marrying somebody of two years yeah. or a year exactly. and all that. Okay. Then when you now talk about marriage that is uh, avoidable, marriage was existing but because of somebody's incapacity to con consummate or willful refusal, persistent willful refusal to consummate the marriage. You know, denying you know um, any of the partner denying each other each other. So to, mm -hmm. You know, because. Once a man and a woman, just like the Bible says, both of them are one, you must have to see your body 
as part of Joanna Kaisen, and Joanna Kaisen part of Joanna Kaisen. Right. Then when somebody is having a venereal disease and you insist of consummating the marriage, and of course you have not done anything to treat it and all that, it can, even when lies and distrust, can also cause marriage to be void, mm. uh, to, to be void. So these are the things that we need to talk about. But apart from those things, so marriage under the Act is also legitimate. And when you look at marriage under the Act, the process, the people that, are, that intend to get married will just go to the registry, they will fill their names and all that, then they will also do the necessary things they are required to do, their passport and all that, then the registry will now publish their names and their passport 21 days, that is if there is any cabinet and then they want to use. So after that, if there is no, nothing like that, they will be called upon to summarize the marriage by which the registrar of the registry, the chief registrar will now bring them together, issue them certificates. However, in Christian perspective, you will discover also that they will go to marriage, they will also sign, there will be certificate, that certificate is always right. three, is always three. Mm. one for the couple, mm. one the church will give for reference, and mm. one will now go to the registry. Okay. So whichever way that you want to do is still. But people usually try to go to and do that offer, obtain the certificate of that registry, yeah. and they still go yeah. to, yeah. to, to That's where, what where, I want to ask. It, so when that is done, when those three copies are made, and one belongs to the couple, the one to the uh, church, church and one to the registry, to the, uh, with that, do you still need to go to the registry? No, you don't need to, but people, that's what people don't understand. Once you have done the registry, you don't need to do the white wedding. Once you have done that white wedding, and those things yes. are completed, yes. you don't need. But, you know, I don't know why people, maybe they are not properly guided. But if they also decide to do that too, it's not there's nothing wrong in it. Okay. There's nothing wrong in it. Okay, so basically this is what marriage is all about.